In today's lecture, we'll be talking about the mechanics of press and shrink fits. The equations that you will need in order to do the homework are included in 356 and 357. 356 shows an interface pressure that evolves at an interface between a collar and a shaft, as shown down here in the figure, with, an, with a set interference delta. Equation 356 is the most general equation if both the collar and the shaft shaft are made of the same materials, then the interface pressure P is given by equation 357. In the last lecture, we talked about what it takes to calculate the stress distribution in a cylindrical pressurized cylinder. In the most general case, we have both internal and external pressures applied to the cylinder, and equations 349 allowed us to calculate the radial and hoop stresses that were associated with those pressures. If we have an internally pressurized cylinder, the hoop and radial stresses have their largest magnitude at the inner surface where the pressure is applied and it falls off as we move to the outer surface. Now we can take these ideas of stress distributions inside pressure vessels and use them to calculate the stresses that would arise if we were to place a shaft of slightly larger diameter than a bore opening of a collar. Shrink fits, press fits are exactly this concept. We're trying to fix some component on a shaft and in order to fix that component on the shaft, we can use a press or shrink fit pressure to create a, an interface contact pressure that generates enough friction so that the collar would stay in the specified location on the shaft. Now, in order to do that, we need to know the interference, in this case, the radial interference between the radius of the shaft and the radius of, of the collar that is intended to go on the shaft. Now, one way we can get that collar on the shaft is we can heat the collar up. If we heat the collar up, every dimension would change commensurate with the coefficient of thermal expansion and increase the diameter of this hole so we could slip it onto the shaft. We allow the temperature to equilibrate and it generates a contact pressure between the collar and the shaft. So it looks like this. If we have a shaft that is press fit or shrink fit into a collar, you now have an interface between the shaft and the collar that generates a contact stress that is just like a pressurized cylinder. For the shaft, the contact stress would be pointing inward, so it would be an outer pressure. For the collar, the contact stress would be pointing outward, which would make it look like an internally pressurized cylinder. The pressure that is generated at the contacting interface depends upon the radius of the interface, that's capital R, the elastic properties of the outer and inner components, and the outer radius of the collar, and the inner radius of the shaft. Now in this case, it's a hollow shaft. We'll get, we'll get to how that changes if the shaft is solid. Capital R is the radius of the shaft. Our outer is the outer radius of the collar, and our inner is the inner Inner radius of the hollow shaft. Delta is the radial interference. Now look, you can calculate this contact pressure either in terms of radius or diameter. You just have to be consistent and use either radii or diameter throughout. And then when you look at the interference, if you're using radius, it has to be a radial interference. If you're using diameter, it has to be a diametral interference. So we know that for pressurized cylinders, what the tangential and radial stresses are, and we can then for the inner member with P outer equal to P in the inner pressure equal to zero, that means for the hollow shaft, we can calculate the tangential stresses, and for the outer member, we can calculate. And if we do that, this YouTube video from EMAG shows how you can heat up a cam lobe and slide it onto a shaft. When you cool it off, it creates a shrink fit pressure that accurately locates it along the shaft. You can do this with multiple components, so long as the friction force requirements are such that it will not slip after it has been placed on 
onto the shaft. Those are cam lobes right there. This is just an illustration of what can be done, showing how an interface interference generates a contact pressure that would keep the cam lobe on the shaft. Now we put a gear on there, another gear, another gear, and so on, showing how we can use shrink fit pressures to accurately locate components along a shaft. This is a quick representation of the stresses that arise when we have either press or shrink fits. In this case, I chose an aluminum shaft with a steel collar. I did this because there's no simple way in Fusion 360 FEA to represent shrink fit stresses. So I put an aluminum shaft, perfect fit inside a steel collar. The aluminum has a greater coefficient of thermal expansion than does the steel collar. And so when I heated this up by 50 degrees, the aluminum shaft wants to expand more than the collar. And you can see that if I toggle on the slice plane, you can see that the shaft is bowing out relative to the collar, and that generates stresses at the interface between the shaft and the collar. And this is a really good way of illustrating what happens if you do a shrink fit, for instance, you would heat up the collar or cool down the shaft, slide the collar over the shaft, and then allow them to equilibrate in temperature, and you would end up with a stress distribution that would look somewhat similar to this. Now, in this case, I'm taking a slice in the YZ plane, and the Z direction is along the radius from the center of the shaft to the exterior of the collar. And so I'm simply looking at the Z, Z directed normal stresses to illustrate to you that in fact, we generate stresses along the contacting interface of the two. Now there's another setting that we can use in Fusion 360, and that is under load case, we can choose the contact pressure display in megapascals. And you see that the interface between the collar and the shaft has a contact pressure. We can use our inspection tool to create a point probe, and we can measure that contact pressure. We can zoom in and we see this something on the order of 41 MPA near the center. And as we go to the boundary, you'll notice that the contact pressure rises dramatically to a value of 221 MPA right at the interface between the collar and the shaft. And in fact, that's exactly what happens. You end up with a large stress associated with the sharp transition in geometry as you move from the collar into the shaft. So the highest points of stress are at these contacts right at the interface where we are leaving the collar and moving fully into the shaft.